Happy Friday. Welcome into Payoff Pitch, Action Network's MLB betting podcast. Great to have you joining us today. Brendan Glasheen here with Charlie DeSterco, Anthony DeBundo. Big shift this week for DeBundo, Charlie. He's been here all week, so trying to keep it rolling. And uh, Charlie in his usual Friday spot. We'll get to the you got to remind me again what the what the new bits called the lucky sevens. Oh, the tri- the triple sevens. Triple sevens. Yeah, it's like it's like a lot. It's like a lot. Uh, you know, like the levers on the what is it the called? Slot machines. Pots. Yeah, the slot machines. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I got it. Yeah. You want to hit okay. triple sevens? Hit the jackpot. That's right. Okay. We'll get to triple sevens, and Charlie can tease his article later on. Um, we have a lot to get into. Full slate. Fridays are always good because some series get underway. Yada yada. Bunch of good games in action. Even <laughs> Texas and Tampa. Those are a couple games, uh, a couple teams that we want to focus on as well uh, for today. So what direction, Charlie, are we going in today for a best bet on this 15 game slate? Yeah, I'm heading out uh, San Francisco, Chicago, Stroman against Descafani. And this over seven and a half is just way too low. Uh, Stroman is expected ERA up around four or three, seven. His XFIP just a little bit under that is actual ERA 2.39. So he's been a byproduct of some overperformance benefiting from a left on base rate. That's nearly 7% higher than his career average and a 227 BABIP. So the batting average on balls in play are extremely low, but it shouldn't be when you look at his metrics, he doesn't strike out a lot of batters. He relies on putting balls into play has a low expected batting average and expected slugging, but he limits barrels. So I expect this game for the Giants. They're fifth in WRC plus in Woba against right-handed pitching, sixth in isolated power. They're in their positive split. Stroman, his walk rate is a career worst right now. So I expect the Giants to have some success. And opposite, Stroman, Descafani, also a negative regression candidate, a four and a half expected ERA, which is about a half run higher than actual, relies on pitching to contact as well like Stroman. He's in the bottom 10% of all pitchers in whiff rate. So when you look at these two pitchers, uh, both guys that rely on pitching to contact, they give up high expected batting averages, high hard hit rates than normal. Uh, and they both, well, at least Descafani attacks his zone. He won't give out free passes. So the Chicago Cubs, despite them being in their lesser split here, I still think they find success. Seven and a half is just way too low in this matchup for these two pitchers that I see as just about an average big league pitcher, maybe Stroman slightly above that and Descafani below. But the wind's blowing out 12 miles an hour. I'm expecting a lot more runs than uh than the six seven, so I'd back it up to eight minus one ten. Yeah, looking at Strowman's last couple starts, uh, the Cubs have won all four of their his last four starts, and the total runs from the other team, their opponent, four total runs in the last four games. Yeah, he's been incredible. He's been incredible. He's been talking smack Juan Soto. He did the Soto shuffle, but I like. You look at the metrics and you look at the balls put in play, he's just kind of benefiting from some good defense and, and some hard contact just going right at players. Yeah, Str- Strowman's a big Twitter guy, right? Do I have that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. He's He's got Twitter fingers, all right. Okay. All right. Very good. Strowman, uh, we'll see how it looks tonight between those two teams, and Charlie's looking for an over. Seven and a half is still the available number at BetMGM. Oh, it's up to eight now at BetMGM. Over yeah, I'd, minus still, I'd still take it, so. Okay. Debundo, I know we've been putting you to work this week. <laughs> yeah, what, do you got, what do you got for a best bet for today? Yeah, I'm going to go with an under. Uh, Charlie talked about uh, Chicago and San Francisco. Wind blowing out 11 miles an hour tonight. Should help that for sure. I think it's the main reason that it has been bet up. Good hitting environment out west. Uh, not a great hitting environment in Philadelphia. It's kind of been the case all week. If you uh, have been following the wildfire smoke, then you know that the wind has been blowing out of the northwest all week long uh, in the northeast. Uh, and that means that a pretty strong prevailing wind in at, at Citizens Bank Park. Uh, and so, you know, eight to 10 miles an hour in tonight. It's been, it was the case <clears throat> Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday uh, against the Tigers. Uh, and it is again the case tonight. The Dodgers get put in their worst offensive split facing a, a lefty and Ranger Suarez. Suarez really struggled with his command. Uh, his first couple starts back from injury, and, and I had expressed some concern about him because he's never really had great stuff. And if the command isn't going to be there, uh, that's going to be a problem for Ranger. But the command in the last two starts has been better. He's been locating the change up well. Uh, and as a result, has pitched much better his last two outings. Uh, now he gets a Dodgers lineup uh, that, again, like I said, is still good, but not great, relatively speaking, against left-handed pitching. 
Uh, and and on the other side, I'm actually encouraged by by Mitch Grove. Mitch Grove's fastball velocity has ticked up pretty steadily uh, after a pretty rough start where he was getting hit hard and, and didn't really have overpowering stuff. But Stuff Plus is liking him more and more with every start. Uh, by Stuff Plus, his fastball was the best it's ever been in his last outing. Uh, excuse me, Michael Grove. Uh, and so because of that, uh, I'm buying in on him as a viable starting pitcher uh, in Philadelphia, even despite the uh, underlying projections not being all that high on him. And I think that's really what's driving this total up to nine and a half. Uh, you know, the bat projecting Grove for 5.16 ERA, uh, ATC 4.8. So pretty low projections on him. But again, I think the projections haven't quite caught up yet to this improved fastball that we're seeing uh, and as a result, I'm going to back him and back the under nine and a half runs in Philly tonight. You go to the game? I am. Yes. Oh. Nice. You're going to have the the wind, the, the wind all ready to go for the friends you go with. <laughs> I'm gonna, well, I'm going to explain it once again to the people in my section. Look, hey, look, did you watch the game Wednesday? Because there were about three or four balls that were hit that would have been homers on normal days that, you know, die at the wall and whatnot. Um so, so that you're going to be recognized in the crowd. Hey, look, it's that guy who knows. Well, well, what's fun is that in the partial, <laughs> the partial season tickets, I, which I have, uh, our section is the same pretty much every every five games, whatever it is that we get tickets for. So I know all the people in my little section now. In my little like. So they definitely know you as the guy that you know licks the fingers, throws it up in the air, and he's like, "It's going in, guys. Wind's going in." Under. <laughs> yeah. Take the under. My first game was the opposite. Yeah, we we, we, we once had. I walked in with my uh, with my dad to a game and. And we were like, well, the flags are all flying straight out. And we're like over. And it was zero zero after four innings and he was making fun of me and then uh, and ended eight to four. So then jokes on him. Well, now <laughs> I kind of want you to do that tonight. What, what Charlie just said. That'd I will. Be... I will. Get us I'll, a video. I'll bring some. I'll, I'm going to ask the left fielder to throw some grass up and see which way it flies. <laughs> uh, OK, that's funny. All right, so an over and an under for our, for our best bets tonight. Dodgers have sort of turned turned a corner too offensively. I know they JD Martinez has been hitting the cover off the ball. Mookie Betts has been making Charlie money, so yes, sir. that's fun stuff. Uh, let's find out if we're going to fade the public today. Of course, we could go in a ton of different directions here. Zarillo put this idea in my head too that we can look at totals uh, with the projections in the app, um, and one of the the most bet over totals is Texas Tampa, two of the biggest over teams in the, in baseball this year. But one, one matchup we do want to highlight Marlins white Sox, 79% of the bets, 80% of the money coming in on Miami over the Chicago white Sox. Uh, are we fading uh, the people? The Marlins are hot. Marlins have turned a corner too, but are we going to come back on the white Sox, Charlie? Uh, you know, I lean White Sox and I lean over in this matchup, uh, but I'm not, I don't have like a, a strong enough take to end up putting my money where my mouth is. I, Yuri Perez, uh, expected ERA nearly two runs higher than actual has given up, uh, you know, about at league average barrel rate and below average and walk rate and his hard hit rate, uh, right around 40%. So he's just like, a, he's been pitching a lot better than expectations. Uh, I'm not that high on him and well, actually, I'm high on him in the future, but I, I do expect him to negatively regress in the uh, shortcomings. But Dylan Cease, I just like can't put my money behind him right now. I, there's something changed with him, and, and DeBundo will probably give you some stuff plus numbers or his arm angle that is the reason behind it. But bottom 10% in hard hit rate, below average in walk rate, barrel rate. He's really not generating as many chases as he used to. His strikeout rate's down 6% from last season. So there's a lot of concern with C's. I tend to think that the Marlins would struggle a bit more against him as the White Sox would versus Yuri Perez, which is why I lean toward the White Sox. But I think both pitchers uh, great out for an over game and the White Sox bullpen is not too great. And the Marlins, despite them having like a higher b above average bullpen, I also grade them usually closer to that below average mark. So lean, lean over lean White Sox, no official play. Bundo, how about yourself? You're going to ride this Miami wave, how they've been playing, or coming back on the White Sox? Yeah, I lean toward the over, too. Uh, I think that the wind blowing in today in Chicago, uh, you know, 10 miles an hour straight in is a little bit concerning for somebody who wants to bet the over. But I, I think that uh, the problem with Dylan Cease, so last year the slider, his slider, was the most valuable pitch in Major League Baseball. Uh, it was a dominant pitch, generated a ton of whiffs, a ton of chases, uh, and even when it was contacted, nobody could hit it anywhere. Uh, and that really is what made Cease so dominant. And the fastball velocity was excellent as well. Uh, he was throwing 
average fastball velocity, 96.8. Well, this year he, he's down to 95.6. So that's a, that's about a mile an hour, which is notable uh, because the results on the pitch are now getting a lot worse. Expected slugging last year, 366. This year, 471. Uh, and the slider, like I mentioned, the uh, Woba on the slider last year, 0.187. This year, 0.289, which is still not great. Like the slider is still a very good pitch, but it's just not quite the same. And the result of the lower ve- velocity is that um, there's just more balls in play against Dylan Cease. And he's always had walk problems. So when he walked guys but struck out a, a bunch of guys, you got away with it because uh, you can limit damage that way. But if you start allowing balls in play, even if they're out, um, you know, and you have traffic on the bases, you're much more likely to run into big innings, give up. Uh, you know, sacrifice flies and whatnot. So you've seen kind of cease regress a little bit from his peak last season. And so I, I don't think you can project him anywhere close to what he was last year uh, with the, you know, 30% plus K rate. If you're not near that, it's hard to be the same pitcher. Uh, and the projections are kind of picking up on that. And the market has moved against him here. Uh, Yuri Perez has similar concerns though. Uh, Perez, I know everybody's in on him and, and they love the size and the fact that he's so young and it's dominant, uh, which is impressive. He's 20 years old. But the walk rates are a real concern. And if you look at some of the location numbers on his pitches, uh, he can't locate any of his breaking balls. The fastball's good, grades out like 110 stuff plus, but the, the breaking balls are just not uh, locating well. And you can even look at the heat maps. Um, he's out of the zone on pretty much all of his change-ups. So he's nowhere near the zone on those. Uh, and the slider has been okay, but the curveball's been pretty poor with command as well. So if you're, as a hitter, no, he can't throw it for a strike, then you can spit on every breaking ball and just sit on the fastball. And so I think it's going to become a problem for Perez uh, until he fix the, uh, fixes the command on the breaking ball. So I like the over here. Um, it's just a lean for me. I'm going to wait and see if this market moves based on the wind and we can get uh, a seven and a half, but I'm going to uh, look to play that. Totals at eight, eight right now at BetMGM minus 110, both sides. Marlins are a short underdog at plus 105. People like Miami. They've won six straight games. Are they are they legit? Could they possibly push Atlanta? Or is Atlanta gonna gonna run with it? Run away with this? I mean, Atlanta's pitching is kind of shaky. It's, the starting pitching is is flawed, but uh, I don't think the Marlins hit nearly enough consistently to stick with Atlanta. Uh, and sure. even like Philly and the Mets, I still think probably finish ahead of the Marlins. But I certainly think the Marlins are a five hundred baseball team. Yeah, I'd echo his point. I I the Braves are the Braves are another level despite. They're shaky pitching. The offense is just incredible. As Charlie found out last night. No, nah, don't even. That's not even. That's not even the Braves' offense. That's a byproduct of the Mets' pitching and the Mets' relief and the Mets' just disastrous team that needs to be imploded and blown up. Oh, I thought they were winning the World Series. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> now, now I want everyone to gone. <laughs> Braves still in first place. Uh, five game win streak, but they're uh, they're only up three and a half games on the Marlins. Yeah, but the Marlins also won. I mean, if you look at their all one, all of the one run games. Yeah, they've won like an absurd number of one run games, which is just completely un- unsustainable. Or at least we thought, right? The Minnesota Vikings last year in football did the same thing. Huh. Every one Although, uh, you know, the, the thing, one thing that's interesting, like Miami didn't have a closer uh, last year. They were they were like rolling out Dylan Floro and and Tanner Scott, who's not a closer, and it, it was rough. Uh, and th- thus, they lost a lot of one run games, and and they were historically unlucky the last couple of years in one run games. Uh, now with an actual closer and puck, like it's a semi more competent bullpen that can hold a one run lead in the ninth inning. So, you know, that, that does make a difference, but yeah, I, I, you look at this lineup top to bottom. I mean, jazz will be back. Like, that'll help, but overall it's not, it's not great. What a, what a, what a comeback, uh, pucks had the bundle. We used to call him AJ puke back in the day when he was in Oakland. Hey, look, the stuff was always good. Yeah. He just got a like strike. It. Yeah. Okay, let's find out what underdogs Charlie and Anthony like today. I brought up, or to start the show, I brought up Texas and Tampa are meeting uh, in tonight, and I think that's that's a really good measuring stick series for Texas. But you know, for the Rays too, have the Rays really ran into a, a rut this year? They had they've been playing 500 ball since their historic start, but this is a really good series. This is a possible playoff matchup the way these teams are playing. Um, Heaney's on the mound for Texas. You got Glasnow on the mound for for Tampa. Tampa's at home, so it makes sense. Texas is a dog. Charlie, you're in on the Rangers plus one thirty five. Totals at eight runs in this game. Why do you yeah. like Texas? Yeah, there's there's also a one fifty out there in the market, so I would grab that if you can. Uh, when you look at these two pitchers, I think it's you know the, I think this number is just way too high. Glass now 
like he'll project better long term than Heaney. But you look at his right now in his fastball, it sits around 95 miles an hour. His last start, his velocity dip is a pretty big concern coming back from a significant injury. And like obviously it's only been two starts, but a 742 expected ear right in that time frame is a bit of a concern. You look at his just numbers. Barrel rate, 20.8%. Hard hit rate, 62.5%. Obviously, just two starts. But his fastball, if he's not, if it's not sitting in that 96 to 98 range, then he becomes a lot more hittable. And opponents have been able to hit him hard. They just haven't fully been able to take advantage yet. So uh, when you look at this pitching matchup, Andrew Heaney opposite him, he's had his lowest of his career as far as hard hit rate goes. 74th percentile of all pitchers. Expected ERA right in the low fours. So, you know, he's not in... And he's about an average pitcher, about as average as you can get. But uh, he's using his changeup a ton more this year, and it's really paid off. Or sorry, it hasn't really paid off. He's been getting crushed on his changeup, but the fastball slider, when he does use it, has been incredible. Both have an expected batting average under 205. So you look at just Heaney last year versus this year. He was in the bottom five percent of all pitchers in barrel rate and hard hit rate. Well, now he has the best hard hit rate of his career. He's really short up on all those areas, and both bullpens they both grade out negatively, but. Tampa exhausted their pen the last couple of games. They had a bullpen game yesterday. And I'm really concerned for them. They're 29th in XFIP. I know like Zerillo's talked plenty of times about the outlook of the Rays, but I do not like the Rays bullpen in the end run. Both offenses in a good split. Both are, I think, top three in their respective splits against lefty and righty. So I just think that this number is way too high. I would back this down to that plus 130 mark. I, I think this is closer to a 120 projection. Bundo, you got a thought on this game quickly before we get your underdog? Yeah, I mean, uh, the fastball dip is notable because he only throws three pitches. And uh, Texas has done a better job this year of picking up on tells and other pitching uh, tipping, you know, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, we know they they hacked Grayson. They hacked Miller. Both guys with, you know, more limited arsenals who are maybe giving away what they have. Uh, if glass now has any kind of tell, uh, or if, you know, they're able to pick up on that fastball or the breaking balls, uh, they're going to have a huge edge on glass because of the limited sample. So I, I lean toward Texas too, but the market came way down here. Uh, and I'm going to have to probably pass now, but, uh, certainly puts the Rays in their worst split as well. They, they do project better against righties than lefties. So, uh, I'm intrigued by glass. Now I faded him yesterday and then he ended up not pitching, but, uh, I think that this numbers come down a lot, but again, Texas's offense has been a supernova. Uh, everybody's having career years. Um, it's Donnie Ecker, the same hitting coach that was the hitting coach of that giants team that had that crazy year where everybody had great years at the same time. So obviously he's cooking with gas there in Texas. All right. Payoff pitch listeners, brace yourselves. Anthony's underdog is who? Yeah, your beloved 14 and 50 Oakland A's. Uh, the market has gotten crazy here on Adrian Hauser. I'm sorry, but uh, Adrian Hauser should not be minus uh, 230, 240 against any major league team, even if you don't count the A's as a major league team. Uh, and when you look at his projections, like he's limited homers thus far this year, but like how long can we really expect it to last? Because you know, you're striking out 5.4 guys per nine projections have him at like five, eight, five, nine for the rest of the year. Uh, the walks are projected to be worse and he's always had command issues. And the home run to fly ball rate is a career low for him at 7.1%. Uh, he was at eight last year and that was in the dead and ball the balls more juice this year. So I, I would expect more homers for Hauser and that's going to be a problem. Uh, and I think that the projection systems, you know, the bat has him as like a five year, a almost five year, a pitcher. So minus two forty with that guy pitching the bulk of the innings in the game. Uh, I can't get to that number at all. The A's are, are going with a mix here of, of pitchers to try to get by. Uh, and it's looking like uh, Sam Mole is going to open. So, you know, it's not going to be a pretty for the A's for sure. <laughs> but, you know, in terms well, of uh, is it ever? <laughs> yeah. And he may open or it might be Medina just like full straight. Um, but either way, like this is a concerning number to get to that. I can't get anywhere near on, on the house. So really at this number, it's, it's, it's a must play for me. Don't let the, don't let the A's get hot. They're too, too straight right now. Too straight. Yeah. Right. They just beat, they took two out of three in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like, you know, Medina being the bulk guy, like, can he throw a strike? Probably not, but 
again, Hauser projections are really bad on him. So I got to, I got to fade him. Charlie, are you, are you staying away or are you letting DeBundo, is he grabbing the torch from you? Uh, I do, is that the A's on a Friday. I, I, you know, I am very much looking at it. Uh, there's a, there's a plus two fifteen that just popped up. And as you just look at these numbers, it's if for a pitcher like Hauser, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's way too high, uh, for him. So, uh, oh man, you know, this is live on, uh, you know what? Screw it. I'll hop on with Devondo here. We'll, we'll ride the A's together. Let's go Oakland. They're going to take, th- they're going to win their third straight win. What is it? A, a fifth of their to- game total in a matter of th- five days. Yeah. Go A's. Well, I am very persuasive. Aren't I? <laughs> all, I ha- all I had to do is just ask the follow-up. Hey, you, you interested? <laughs> That's a, a, you know that's that's what a good host does, Brendan. They ask follow up questions. It's perfect. I feel like Mike Greenberg on, on Get Up. You know, just nat, just just throw softballs, play traffic cop, and then make you walk into a take. It's great. Yeah, I mean the Brewers also like are benefit. They have a negative run differential too. Like it's not like they're even an unbelievable <laughs> offense. Like this this team is not as good as a lot of people think. Hence, like I don't know if you saw this past week that I added the Reds to make the playoffs. And I, I think there's an avenue where the Cincinnati can make a, a a run at the NL Central Division, given how weak that division is as a whole. Debundo, are we allowing Reds talk today? Well, I went on uh, Green Dot Daily yesterday and kind of just said, like, I like the Reds too, uh, but there's probably value betting against Ellie De La Cruz. Uh, and then he got an infield single on me. <laughs> but I, I think that uh, the Reds are exciting. The starting mm. pitching is going to be the bigger question, though, because like Ashcraft is, looks broken at the moment. They, like he can't seem to get by with just the. Two I don't think pitchers. he's want to start yet, right? After last night, not in uh, not in his last. He has it this season, not in the last no. month, though. Yeah, he's been. I think he's gotten. He's got like eleven ERA the last seven starts. So um, he's getting eaten up there. But you know, between Green Abbott and Ashcraft, like, I just don't know if there's enough pitching. But it, it'll be interesting. I'm intrigued by the Reds. Like I said, it's more just I, I don't think Milwaukee's any good. So I want to bet against Milwaukee. You can do that in a variety of different ways. Yeah. Okay, a couple more from each of you, then we'll get out of here uh, and, and start the weekend, at least for the baseball people. Um, final bets. Charlie also has his... Um, I'm, triple I'm sevens. It. Triple sevens. I almost called it lucky sevens again. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> get it right, I'll, Brendan. I'll get it Bill, by, it's the I'll Bill Wamsgans triple play. Triple sevens plus a couple more picks. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'll start with uh, my picks before I go into the triple sevens. Brendan, you should be smiling right now. I'm taking the Red Sox. Yeah, I saw that. What are you doing? Listen, I'm going to the game. So not only am I going to be in Yankees at Yankee Stadium, but I'm going to be rooting on behind enemy lines. Garrett Cole, you look at his numbers from a baseline perspective and you think that he's having a, a Great year from like 2019 to 20 when he was with the Houston Astros, similar numbers to that. But then you look at his peripherals and there's a lot of concern there. His expected, his XFIP is up at 397, his X ERA up at 382. His actual ERA is a run lower than that. So you just look across the board, expected batting averages is worse since 2017, as well as his expected slugging. His bail rate still remains near that 10% mark. His strikeout rate has dropped over 8%. So across the board, he has not been as dominant as you would think when you look at just his numbers, his walks are up, his command's been a bit off. He's not generating as many uh, swings and misses. You look at his whiff rate, 92nd percentile last year, this year, 42nd percentile. Last year, he was up there 92nd in strikeout rate percentile. Now he's down to 66th. So he's not getting as many strikeouts. He's walking more batters. When he does get the ball put into play, it's expected that it should have landed for more base hits than it has been. And when you look at his second most used pitch, it's change up and stuff plus down at 73. So his second most used pitches has not been great this year. Obviously Garrett Whitlock is. Yeah. Not- yeah. Now to, now to, now to Garrett Whitlock, please. <laughs> Obviously Garrett Whitlock is not a, uh, an amazing pitcher that you want to back, but you look at his expected metrics, they're in the low to mid fours. It, he's, underperforming is ERA is actually at, up at five, six. And also you look at his, his, who he played in his limited starts this year. He's played Tampa twice, who is the best offense in baseball. So obviously those numbers will be slightly inflated and he's allowing a near two home run per nine and a 67% left on base rate, which I would expect to 
positively regress for him. He has a high chase rate and he has his career best as far as hard hit rate goes. So like, I think that obviously this number plus 145, 150, I would back the Red Sox here. Uh, the Yankees don't have Aaron Judge. He's on the injured list. So this offense does have a lot of concern. And the Red Sox offense, they're top 10 in WRC plus and Woba against right-handed pitching. So, you know, I then, and another thing, I, the bullpen, the, the Yankees just had a doubleheader. Michael King threw 30 pitches. Marinaccio threw 30 pitches. Clay Holmes, probably going to pitch today, but also made an appearance last night for 16 pitches. So the bullpen was taxed. No Aaron Judge. Obviously, they have Stanton back and Donaldson back. But honestly, that's on, that might be a benefit for Whitlock, who gets a lot of chases here. So I can't get to this number. I think the Red Sox are undervalued here. And then my other one, before triple sevens, over in Mets Pirates. These are two horrible pitchers. Both expected ERAs in the mid to high fives. Uh, McGill has a walk rate at 12%. His strikeout rate has dropped 8%. His velocity down over a mile and a half, over a mile per hour. Expected batting average, expected slugging, brutal. Like you look at across the board, he's not generating chases. His fastball has no juice. So now he's getting killed. And his left on base rate is even uh, 74% should be lower down to that like 69, 70 range. And then Rich Hill, the luck box himself, hmm. uh, bottom 15% of all pitchers expected batting average, expected slugging, yet somehow gets by the Cardinals, somehow gets by all these teams without that much damage. Career worst expected slugging, that's near 500. And he doesn't strike out many batters. So winds blowing out eight miles an hour, both. Bullpens, bottom 10 in the league. Mets are extremely taxed after this Atlanta series. Verlander only pitched three innings yesterday. So look at this matchup. I think both pitchers grade out horribly. I think the bullpens also grade out poorly. The Mets are hitting the ball. They just can't have any pitching shut down the opposition. So makes for a great over here. I'd back it up to, I think it's at nine and a half now. So I'd take nine, nine and a half. And then triple sevens, real quick before I let the bundo take it. Tommy Pham crushes left-handed pitching, a 133 WRC plus and a 271 isolated power. He's actually has a 16% barrel rate this year and a 534 expected sluggings. And that's counting against right-handed pitchers too. So 33% of all hits have been home runs against lefties. And Ryan Mountcastle for the Orioles, a 171 WRC plus against left-handed pitching. I think this is a great buy low spot on him. He crushes lefties. Can't hit a righty to save his life. Has a 15.3% barrel rate, a 530 expected slugging. And if you look at his numbers against left-handed pitching, seven home runs, six doubles, and a 11017 uh, OPS, 13 of 23 hits gone for extra bases. So as always, triple sevens, 0.5 units, total bases, 0.1 home run. And the last one, you'll have to tune into the article to see. Beautiful. I was just going to clarify that. So you do, wait, you, you, thought, you thought that that was good. I mean, are you going to become the triple sevens guy now on like Twitter and stuff? That's that's, that's kind of the yeah. Goal, right? Well, that, that's the goal. I got my own graphic, so uh, you oh, know, very good. Charlie, you don't out. watch Succession, do you? I do not. I uh, I, I, just actually, say, I just started it. You missed a chance to call it the Bill Wamsgans triple play. Yeah, I, <laughs> Anybody's watched Succession, uh, then you get that reference. Yes, on I, I've that's only uh, started the show, so I, I I'm getting into it because I've heard I need to watch it. Yeah, the end sucks. That's my opinion. Uh, <laughs> oh, that it does. Yeah, uh, I won't give away spoilers, but you know, a certain someone on ghosts, and you're just like, all right, this is annoying. Uh, okay, Tabundo, what do you got? Your last few, please. Yeah, I like the over. Uh, there's a seven out there, minus one twenty. Over seven and a half, minus one oh five is fine. Uh, Angels, Mariners. Uh, Luis Castillo's fastball velocity is still not back, and so I'm going to still bet against him. Uh, Castillo's stuff plus on his fastball is below average right now. Normally, we've seen this in the past from Castillo where he starts a season slow, the velocity needs time to ramp up. He's not the same pitcher in April and May as he is in June, July, August. Uh, but it's now June 9th, and uh, the fastball's still down a tick, tick and a half from uh, past years. So I think that he's going to project as a worse pitcher, uh, even though his strikeout rate is up this year, which is surprising to me. Um, and I think we'll have some problems against this Mariners lineup. Finally seeing some signs of life from uh, the Seattle lineup. Julio Rodriguez, top 20 hard hit rate last month. Uh, and so, and Teoscar Hernandez starting to tap back into that power after he's had really a rough start to his career in, in Seattle. But we've seen that before with guys getting traded and, and pressing early. Um, Teo's starting to figure some things out. So I like the over tonight in uh, Seattle and LA. And I took some Cleveland overnight as a dog. I like them up to minus 105. Logan Allen against Christian Javier. Javier is generally somebody I like to bet on, but uh, no Jordan Alvarez in the lineup is just a huge loss, and the market was slow to react to that. Allen, as somebody who I think will continue to beat projections as well, um, really uh, 
the the lefty release point of him seems to be giving guys problems. Uh, and the strikeouts have been better than they, they translated. You know, he was somebody who struck out a ton of guys despite not a great fastball in in the minors. So 11 strikeouts per nine uh, last year in AAA, 12.5. And thus far, the projection systems in the majors have him under nine per nine, but I disagree. Uh, and and he's, con- he's put up over nine strikeouts per nine thus far. I think he can maintain that. So I'm going to go with uh, the guards at home who appear to be finally making a run here. And I know they're going to steal this division from my beloved twins because Minnesota continues to blow opportunities to extend their division lead. All right. We'll see if they figure it out. When's Joe Ryan pitches tomorrow, right? Yeah. How's Joe Ryan doing for you? Oh, Joe Ryan's been good. Good as always. Not George Kirby though. Yeah. George Kirby. Well, George Kirby just got blown to hell. So he might be in, I mean, it's a long year, but let's see Joe Ryan sitting. Yeah. Two, seven, six ERA. 10 strikeouts per nine. That'll play. Yep. Okay. He's Garrett Cole has been a little shaky. Uh, yeah, I heard. Yeah. He, he apparently Shohei, Shohei has been him. a little shaky. Yeah. McClanahan's looked very good, but his strikeouts are down a little bit. You just heard about Garrett Cole being shaky. I did. Yeah, that's right. And the Red Sox do traditionally own him. Yeah. Ravi Devers, six of his eight hits, home runs against Garrett Cole. Yes. Cole's even true. said, I don't know how to get him out. So. Well, yeah, and then Verdugo crushes him too, and and Kike, right? Kike Hernandez. Yeah. So I just I just put this together. You're both going to games tonight. Um. Yeah. I'm, you're going to the Yankees, Red Sox. You're Look, going. The air's Dodgers, cleared Phillies. up, baby. Yeah. We're we're down into the slightly elevated levels here in Philly today. I'm I'm finally able to breathe again. My throat has been awful for two days. I have b- bad allergies to begin with, and this air quality has killed me. But we're back, baby. Philly is body. back. New York is back. I put worse things in my body. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going out. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to watch some home runs. Let's go. On that note, we will go. We'll, <laughs> Charlie can begin whatever process he needs uh, to, to put into his body before the game. Um, thank you all for tuning in. You all have a fantastic weekend. Payoff pitch presented by BetMGM, MGM action networks, MLB betting podcast. We return on Monday morning. See you later.